Welcome to this headdress tutorial. First, we're gonna start with prepping our feathers. You're gonna need at least 10 feathers if you have fluffy ones. You'll need fabric glue. Here are two different types. You can use either one or whatever you prefer. You'll need pliers and steel wire. Cut a few inches of a piece of steel wire. Take your pliers and straighten out the piece a bit. Take one of your feathers and make sure that the bottom of it has been clipped so that you can get right to the heart of the meat of it. And then you're gonna take your piece of steel wire and push it right into the center. It should be soft enough that you can apply a bit of pressure and get a good fix in there. And then take your pliers and continue to apply a little bit of pressure just to lodge that steel wire in there a bit. Not so much, and be careful that you don't push it all the way through. You want to be very gentle with this. Um, maybe it goes in about a half an inch. And then take a little bit of glue and dab it on the bottom here in a second. And that will help secure these in a little bit more. Now, coming up here in just a sec is a supply list. Please screenshot this or pause the video and write all this down. I will also include it in the blog post below so that you can make sure you have everything that you need. Okay, we are starting by drafting a skull pattern. <laughs> that sounds crazy, but so uh, take your non-stretch woven fabric and you want to uh, find the center line. Essentially, we are creating one half of it that will transfer over to the other half and you want to mark your center point with pins. Yes. And then you just do a bit of draping, pinching and pinning until it fits the, the head form in a way that you like. Now I'm going with uh, a skull cap that's not a full skull shape. So it's a bit more like a rounded dome. And I'm just pinning all my darts where I like them. If you're unfamiliar with this type of technique, it's used in fashion and pattern uh, drafting a lot. So you'll be more familiar with it, but um, learning this will translate into a lot of future projects. So it's a good skill to know. When you do this, you want to make sure that you are on a straight grain line down the center line. You don't want to be on a bias, uh, bias meaning on the um, cross grain of a fabric because it will stretch slightly and you definitely don't want any stretch, um, not in the center points anyway, not along the center line. The center line being um, the exact half of the head right across from the forehead back down to the nape. Once I have it pinned where I want it, essentially the pin marks will become seam lines. So take a marker and start drawing out the shape. You're gonna wanna draw down the darts that you created. And when we take them all apart, uh, we will draft those as uh, pattern pieces. It's very exciting. Again, I'm not making a full skull cap here. It, the typical showgirl style is a full cap. And if you're doing one, that's great. Make a vent at the back. Uh, that's how you get it on your head and typically there's a big like V vent at the back so if the girls have a ponytail it goes back through there uh, and then you'll run a strand of elastic between it and that'll allow it to expand and then retract when you're putting your head inside of it. Now you'll unpin your whole thing and you'll cut out those pieces, everything that you drew. 
you want to make sure to mark what the pattern pieces are and mark your center fold. Most likely you will have a center fold mark. That will indicate when you're cutting your fabric that the fabric is in half. Now, if all of this is a little bit too complicated for you, perhaps you're a newer sewer or you've never drafted a pattern or you're unfamiliar with patterns, that's totally fine. You can go on Etsy and find ready-made skull caps. So that will save you a bit of time, but learning this is pretty awesome and will translate into a lot of things that we, that we can do together or that you can do on your own. I'm using standard butcher paper. I think it's butcher paper. I bought it on Amazon on a roll. And now take your pattern pieces and lay them out. And typically you'll, well, first of all, find your center, the one that is marked with a center fold line and place that along the seam line there. And now I'm just tracing out the pattern pieces. I'm tracing them right at the cut line. So this is, the pattern that I'm creating here is the Peltex shape. And the reason why I'm not adding any seam allowance to this particular pattern is because we will join the seams flush together with a zigzag stitch, meaning there will be no seam allowance because there will not be any seam allowance when we sew it together. When we fast forward a little later and we make the pattern piece for the fabric cover that goes over it, we will take these same pieces and we will add a three quarter to a half inch seam allowance and that will be our pattern for the fabric that goes over the skull cap. That being that because those pieces sewn together will have seam allowance. When you trace out your patterns, just make sure to note which side is attached to what. You can use notch marks, uh, wording. With Peltex, there is no grain line, but typically with a pattern, you always want to mark your grain line. All in all, and as much wording as possible on your pattern pieces will help you so you don't get confused later when you're trying to assemble them. My pattern here is only three pieces. I am lucky. Three is good. And when we sew it all together, it should actually only be two, four, five pieces because one of these has a center fold line. So when we cut it all out, it will only be one big piece. Okay, this is Peltex. We've talked about it before, but if you're unfamiliar with it, uh, you can buy it at Joanne Fabrics and it comes either fusible or non-fusible. I believe I have the non-fusible kind here. Um, it's about $6 a yard. It's great. You can do a lot of cool stuff with it. It's great to just have some on hand. Okay, so here I am drying out my centerfold piece. A centerfold piece, that's funny. Uh, <laughs> it has a center fold mark, which is usually indicated by three round circles in a triangle shape on your pattern piece, just FYI. In case you ever see that on a pattern, you're wondering what it is in the centerfold. All right, piece number one done. Oh, and I have enough salvage here that I can fit one of these guys on. That's great. Always utilizing as much as you can. So the nice thing about this is that once we have it all assembled, we will put it back on the dress form head and take a look at it and see if we like the overall shape when it comes to the edges. And you can put it on your own head, that's probably wise because you'll be the one wearing it, or your client will. 
you know, trace out the shape that you want from there. So here I'm just continuing to cut out pieces. Nothing exciting happening here. Oh, I had two pieces that were on the centerfold. Okay, great. Awesome, so I really only have three pieces here. That's so much better than I thought. My apologies, I filmed this uh, about a month ago, so I forgot exactly what my pattern pieces look like, but that's what my skull cap looks like. Now we're gonna sew it. This is, unfortunately, uh, my machine is really, the light is really blowing out what I'm doing here, but I am starting at the points and I've got my machine set to a zigzag stitch and you just, you don't wanna overlap them, you push them together and you just sew. And you just, as you're going, it'll start to curl into a rounded shape. It's kind of satisfying. Sometimes it can be a little bit tricky if your pieces are really, have a really tight curve on them, but typically it's not too difficult. And again, I'm sorry for this angle. I'm still trying to figure out how to get the perfect angles. I like to start at the point, at the peak in the center and go out. That way I know that everything will match. If you start from the edge and go in, your point may not meet where it needs to with the other piece. So this is an easier way to do it. Um, this this will translate for fabric as well, uh, but with Peltex it's, it's much easier to do it this way. And again, you see I'm kind of starting in the center and going out. Or not. Oh, I think I ran out of bobbin. Nope, I came unthreaded. That's a joy of sewing. You know, sometimes you all prepare for a project and then the uh, thread comes undone. It's real fun when you run out of bobbin after you've just sewn a whole bunch and you don't even realize it. That's, that's very exciting. It's a sewing blunder. In the future, I'm going to work on trying to get better angles with this. So thank you for being patient as I am learning this process of making tutorials. Trying to get the right angle is very tricky. Sometimes I have to sew around my camera and it's very weird, but I uh, just wanna make sure that y'all can see what I'm doing. I'm trying my best here. So this should be wrapped up pretty soon. And then we'll go on to the next step. But so far, if, you're, if you've gotten this far already, you're doing really good and I'm very proud of you. I flipped it inside out there. You don't need to, but it's just to show that when you zigzag things together, uh, you can flip them inside or out, it's the same. All right, here's a bit of a more advanced step, but I have faith that you can do it. If you have a machine that zigzags, here's what you do. You wanna take your steel gauge wire and you're gonna make a loop like we just saw. And, uh, <laughs> sorry, that's my dog shaking. Uh, you're going to take your machine and set it to the widest stitch and the the longest stitch and you'll zigzag over the wire it takes a bit and if you're really nervous you can just walk the foot just walk the needle through do it very slowly if you really want to you can just hand stitch this on although navigating and finagling with the steel wire with a hand stitch is kind of a pain in the butt uh, but you can do it and um, really really going to stress that you wear protective eyewear here um, mostly because if the needle hits that wire, it can snap and fly at your face. And 
nobody likes an eye injury when they're trying to make a headdress. It's no fun. I think I've I've been there. I definitely have a horror story about getting hit in the eye with something. It wasn't a needle, but um, I've definitely had a bunch of broken needles fly in my face. So eyewear, protective eyewear, especially at this point, is a great idea. But again, don't be scared. You can do this and just walk. You can use the hand reel to just walk the needle back and forth. It'll take a little bit longer, but I have faith that you can do it. If you want to skip this step, you totally can, but this adds a lot of uh, stability to your your skull cap. And typically the uh, folks that make the uh, showgirl headdresses, you'll, they'll, they'll be made out of buckram and milliner's wire. And I, I just, I'm not super familiar with buckram. I've worked with it a few times. Uh, it's not my forte. And so my thoughts are always just go with what you know. Uh, you could hand edge all of this with uh, milliner's wire too. It's just a little bit thinner and more flexible. So again, that really strong stability won't be there, but uh, you know, there are other ways to do this. There's many, many ways to do many things. Um, this is just the way that I know. Okay. So now we're going back to uh, before I sewed the wire and I just wanted to show you that, but I'm just sort of fixing up the head shape that I want. I realized I don't like that straight line right across the forehead. So I'm just going to trace out a shape that I like and just cut that out. That's really all I've done here. It's not super exciting. <laughs> but I figured I would show this step because later you'll be like, hey, wait, where did that, uh, why, why does it look different, you know? When you're sewing the wire to have your pliers on hand because you're going to need them to kind of bend if you're going around severe angles and stuff like this peak that I've made here, I had to use the wires as I was sewing to kind of tweak that shape. And again, just go really slow. Boop. All right, so here I'm taking my pattern pieces that I've used to uh, cut out the Peltex and I'm creating my fabric that will go on the top of it and I'm just adding in a seam line. So same pattern pieces, same markings, just a quarter of an inch to a half an inch seam allowance on all the edges that get sewn together, not the center fold mark. That's still the center fold, nothing's changed there. As you just tra trace it out and then you're gonna wanna use a four-way stretch fabric uh, to cover the top. It's just much easier to use a stretch fabric because you can kind of pull it a little bit to get better coverage. And I'm just cutting out my pieces here. Uh, if, uh, if you have questions, please feel free to comment below. I can do follow-up tutorials. Um, I realize this is kind of advanced. A lot of people are efficient sewers and things, so I just want to make sure that everyone feels like they can follow along. All right, what you just saw there, I'm sorry, was me just testing that the fabric piece went over it after I've sewed it together. So. Okay, now I'm gonna take this fancy foam cone and I'm using an X-Acto knife to just hollow out the inside a little bit to be in the shape of a dome because obviously the top of my head is not totally flat, so having it curved inside will allow it to fit on top of the uh, skull cap really nicely. So I've used an X-Acto knife to kind of uh, create a bit of a, a follow line and then I'm scoring it on the inside a little bit so I can scoop it out easier. This is not really dense foam. This is the same kind of things you find any of these cones at a fabric store for pretty inexpensive. I think they're for wedding decorations. Yeah, I'm just using a spoon. I'm just scooping it out. You know, as I make more of these tutorials, I'm really hoping to uh, find some editors to help me because editing these together is is it's a lot of work, which I don't, definitely don't mind doing. I love sharing this information, but I feel like uh, the videos will be more entertaining if I had a bit more time to edit in some 
better ways of doing this, different angles and whatnot. But I appreciate your patience in watching this uh, as, uh, you know, again, I'm learning. All right, a nice little carved in there, concave. And that yeah, fits so nicely. Great. Now I don't need it this long, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna trim it down a bit. Just some scissors. Again, this foam is really easy to work with, so you don't need any heavy duty supplies for this particular type of foam. Scissors will do nicely. And I'm just using my tabletop to kind of push, smooth it down just a little bit. Okay, now you want to take some of your steel wire and you're going to cut a piece that's a little bit longer than uh, the entire length of the cone. And you're going to just push it right through the center. Uh, use your pliers to straighten it out a little bit. It'll be nicer for you. It won't slide off, off the center. I'm trying to get it as center as possible. This is just an ad another added measure of securing it to the top of your head. And we'll also use glue as well. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I should push the, um, at some of the camera angles I was trying to get as close as possible and I didn't realize it was a bit out of frame. Um, all I'm doing here is straightening the wire. Nothing, you're not missing anything super exciting. Just making that little bit of wire as straight as possible. I really should have trimmed this clip. Sorry about that. Okay, here we go. Yep, just push it on through. And leave yourself a couple inches on either end. But what I am going to do is uh, at the top bit here, I'm going to take my pliers. Oh, I see I've already curled it. And you just want to um, curl it around a bit and pull it down so that it's as flush to the top as possible. And then I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and just poke a little hole right in the top of the crown of the skull cap. Make sure to cap your exacto knives. <laughs> and then uh, you'll just uh, feed it through and try to pull it as flush as possible. And then you'll take your uh, pliers and um, curl. Well, we're not there yet, apparently. So, what I've done is I've laid glue in between this skull cap and the foam and I'm just pressing it in. I apologize for clipping that earlier than I thought. Uh, yeah, so essentially I've put glue in there and I typically don't like to use hot glue on foam. It tends to melt it. So I've just used Julet or Gemtac would work or the new uh, E6000 that's um, the non-fuming the non kind because I think regular will actually eat through the styrofoam. So don't use that. Use a crafting fabric glue for this. Um, and that now I'm just curling the wire in and you just kind of keep curling it and you can feel it getting tighter and tighter and it's really nice and eventually you will have a very secure and stable uh, cone on your head and then once that's in there you just kind of push it down a little bit so it's not um, poking out too bad so i will say about the lining of this skull cap when you're all done use the same pattern pieces that you used for your peltex to cut out felt or foam or however you like to line your your head pieces and you cut out that same shape and sew it together again and you should just be able to press it right inside you might have to trim out a little bit but uh, the lining should be the same size as your peltex pattern pieces if not slightly smaller all around the edges okay so here is my fabric coating covering and I'm just gonna make a laying it down across the top of that cone I'm just going to cut out a little bit now it's stretchy so I can go a little bit smaller I can go to the size of the top and it will stretch wider which is nice so it'll give it a nice fit it won't be uh, there won't be any baggy bits just cutting a nice easy hole <laughs> an easy hole <laughs> all right and stretching it over and we have something that looks like something weird, but will also but will soon look like something awesome. And I should have about 
a quarter of an inch to an inch of overhang on all of my uh, edges there, which is great. So now all I'm doing is just turning them over and gluing them down. I really love this fabric tack glue. It's good for a lot of things. It dries super fast. So you can push this down and hold it for 20, 30 seconds and it won't peel up on you. Uh, you can also use pins to hold things down if you need to. But So I'm going around all of the outer rim first and just placing the fabric down so it holds nicely. And then I'll be going around on the inside and doing the same thing. I'm just trimming a little bit, you know, trimming out that piece I cut out. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and now I'm just going around on the inside and um, just pressing down the fabric so it looks nice. So when you, when you have your lining cut out and everything, and again, I always like to do lining very, very last just in case you forget something or you need to get into the project and, and adjust anything, um, uh, you'll, the lining will go over that glued edge nicely and it'll look like a clean finish. Anyway, if you can see, I know I've sped this video up, but you can tell how nicely this glue will stay fairly quickly, just with a, a couple seconds of a hold. Also, the nice thing about this glue is that um, you can sew through it. So it's great for holding down patches and appliques and fringe, and then you can sew right through it, and it's, it's wonderful, and you don't have to stress about if your pin fell out or if you lost a pin or if you forgot to take a pin out in one of your garments. So I really love to keep a bottle of this on hand for multiple, multiple projects. Uh, if you see what I'm doing there when I'm taking the scissors and clipping in, when you're at a, a real joint like that, a nice curve, you just do a little snip and it'll help you fold the pieces over. Relieve some of the tension. And now I'm just gluing down the fabric to the cone so it doesn't slide around. Uh, this glue, it, it has a bit of a uh, fume. It's not really strong, um, but it is uh, flammable until it's dry. So just be careful not to have any open flame around. <laughs> uh, but as far as I know, it's non-toxic. I'm not using gloves here, as you can see. As it dries, it just kind of peels right off of you like rubber cement. So again, it's called Fabric Tech. And now I'm just painting. So I have purple feathers. So I'm going to do an ombre of purple on top to black to match the skull cap. And I've just used a regular acrylic paint here. No big deal. I'm just filling in all of the, the holes of the styrofoam. So it's a nice coverage. It's pretty, pretty basic painting 101 right here. And I'm just adding a little bit of black to give me that ombre that I like. And sometimes when you're painting ombre, um, you'll have to go in again with the, the lightest color into the black, which I have done here. Because as you see um, how I'm getting that real stripe. And uh, later I went back in with um, some purple and drew it back down again from the top. So it had a really nice, a nice ombre. Again, I'm working off camera here a little bit, my bad. You get the gist. All right, now we're gonna add the cool filigree part. So I've got my little headpiece off to the side there. I'm just gonna take some butcher paper and I'm gonna just carve out a really basic little shape that I think might look nice. 
I'm going with the line of the front of the headpiece. When you be really, really creative here, I will say my foam work on this is pretty basic. I, it's it's one, one cut out with some filigree and I could have gone totally bananas, uh, adding smaller pieces and all kinds of color detail, but I kept it pretty, pretty simple for this tutorial. Uh, the finished piece, you know, the, the joy of costuming is that things are never really done. And so I'm going to add in some rhinestones and some other things like that in the, at a future date. But for now, I just wanted a really cool filigree piece around framing my face. So I have cut it out of paper, kind of played it with, laid it down on the headpiece and I liked it. So now I'm just cutting it out of foam. I'm picking a color of foam that I know I'm going to paint the same color. So that's nice. It's just an easy base to start with and I am tracing it onto it. So this foam that I have here has that sticker back. You can use it, you can not use it, it really doesn't matter. Um, for so It has benefits and it has drawbacks. So I just happen to have it. And I'm just tracing out my piece and now I'm just gonna cut it out. So all the little bits on the inside, I will use an X-Acto knife to cut out after I've got this one. Uh, for filigree and things like that, you can go online and, and, you know, grab some pictures. I think there's probably tons of templates. There's clip art you can use. You can print it out and kind of cut it up and piece it out in different ways. I just sort of made these shapes up. Um, but you can really go so elaborate and so over the top. And, I mean, you can use this crowd. You can layer and layer and layer. And then when you start adding color and it's just going to get so so fantastic so don't be afraid to just go there just go there be extra all right so now i'm just using my exacto knife to well first i'm using my scissors to kind of clean that up and then i'm going to use my exacto knife oh sorry first i'm tracing out the little pieces so that i know where i'm cutting with my exacto knife great little swirly swoops and when I cut those out, I save them to the side because uh, I add them in on top of things later just to give it some dimension. And here I am just tracing these pieces out. Be very careful when using an X-Acto knife. Don't cut yourself. And that goes for everything, but you know, try to always cut away if you can. Oh, also, if you happen to have a laser cutter, you are a winner and you can program in files and it will just cut out a bit of bajillion little filigrees or scales or whatever you want and go you for having a laser cutter. <laughs> that would be amazing. But I don't, so I have to manually cut out all the things. Good times. Maybe that's why I didn't make this super elaborate. Sometimes I get impatient and I don't want to do this about a bajillion times. Looks like a boomerang. Okay, cool. So I like the shape of it. Now, what I've done is I've covered my head with a plastic bag, which looks super morbid, but it will protect your foam head. And I'm, this is where positive benefit of that sticky foam. I'm able to peel it off and stick it to the head in the way that I want. And leaving a little bit of the top lifted because I know that the head piece, the skull cap is lifted like that a little bit. And now I'm just using the extra little bits that I cut out from the center pieces and just kind of adding in uh, little little filigrees, little bits of added detail. There's a word for it in the industry and I can't remember. I just heard it this week and I can't remember what it is. I have to find out. All right, now I'm going to paint it. 
obviously it's already purple, but I want it to be, a, I want it to be painted. <laughs> so I'm using a bit of a pearl white and mixing it with my lavender to give it some dimension. And I'm just gonna coat it. And thankfully, because I'm using purple on purple, I don't believe I used more than one or two coats. I think I went over it twice just to make sure that none of the pen marks showed through. Uh, but yeah, I pretty much just gave it a couple coats of paint. And you can see it's a slightly different color lavender too, so I like to match. Uh, typically when you're painting foam like this, you're gonna wanna prime it before laying in the color that you want because this foam just sucks up paint. So if you lay down a primer or even if you put a like a Mod Podge on it, you'll only have to paint it once or twice versus like seven or eight times because it just wants to suck up the paint and so you add a million coats to it. But again, thankfully because I'm painting on purple, it doesn't actually matter that it sucks up purple because it's already purple. Now I'm gonna do another coat, but I wanted it to have a little bit more dimension, so I'm using this pigment powder. This is a gold iridescent, and I'm mixing it with a little bit of a purple, and it'll just kind of add slightly more luminescent quality, because once this dried, I realized it was a little bit more matte than I wanted. As you can see, it's just kind of gorgeous. It's gorgeous! I love it. I love that you have a nice view of my hand. Again, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to sort out these camera angles soon, I promise. But you can see it's just it's a nice sheen to it, even in the video. It's just pretty. Those luminescent powders are by uh, Lumiere, who they also make regular paints, but they make the pigment powders, which can be added to any paint, and it just adds a bit of uh, nice, nice added luminescent quality to it. All right, so it dried and I clipped it really quickly. I'm just hot gluing it onto the headpiece now. So when it dried, I peeled it off the plastic and you know trimmed out any of the paint overlays that were, you know, uh, had seeped over and dried. And now I'm just using my glue gun to uh, secure it to the headdress. Easy peasy. And I have a little bit of an overhang there. You see where it not on the headpiece I'll address that in a little bit you want to make sure to stabilize that a little bit more than just the craft foam because uh, you don't want it to tear I'm gonna coat this with a resin coat I've talked about this before I love this stuff it's a two-to-one mixture it's called XTC 3d it's fantastic and I know that I want a shiny watery sheen to this, so I'm gonna do it after my paint job. You could also do this before your paint job and lay paint on it and it's great. So I have uh, put marker marks on my little, uh, my little container there, thank you, the word is container. And I know I want uh, two parts of this bigger bottle to one part of the other, so I think I'm doing 20 to 10. And I wanted to film doing this because it really is just this easy. And sometimes some of these resin mixes and when you get silicones and liquid plastics and all that, it just seems so overwhelming. But this one is my favorite, it's super easy. And it doesn't have a, it doesn't have a strong odor or doesn't off gas terribly. So it's, it's fine to do. Again, always use a ventilated area, but you know. Okay, so I've got one part mixture in there and use disposable utensils because once the stuff dries, your paint brushes are moot. They are not usable anymore. So the plastic containers are great because when it dries together, you can just, once it's dry, you can, um, and cured, you can squeeze the plastic and just pick it right out. And just try to get all of it out of there as much as possible. Uh, typically I would suggest wearing gloves. I ran out of gloves 
but I've used this stuff enough. I really don't get my hands too dirty with it anymore. But uh, yeah, I always use gloves. That's the nice thing to do to yourself. Wear gloves. Okay, and now I'm just going to use a smaller mixture. And I've had to write on Sharpie on this container about a bajillion times because it's become more and more difficult to read. So you'll see my markings there. So the reason why I didn't mix it all together in that one container is because I wanted a little bit more mixture than would allow in that one container. But uh, when I'm doing smaller batches, I can just pour two parts of that mixture in there to in one part all in the same container. And then you pour it in the bigger one to mix. And if you see there on the bottom of the screen is a little lake made out of uh, aluminum foil. You, as I've said in the previous about this particular stuff, your, your uh, working time is more if the surface layer is shallow. So using uh, the aluminum and making a, a dish will allow you to pour the mixture out and it has a lot more surface area. It won't cure as fast. The first time I ever used this, and again, I don't know why I didn't edit this clip a little bit smaller, but that's okay. Uh, I had it all mixed in a, in sort of a deep dish and it cured in like five minutes. It went from great to all of a sudden getting really hot and then just like a rock. It was so crazy. I'd never experienced it before. So now I know after watching a few tutorials about this that you want to create a little aluminum lake bed. It'll give you more working time. You have about 10 to 15, sometimes 20 minutes of working time with this, it'll just slowly become more like thick syrup. So I'm pouring it in this, and then I'm gonna mix it really, really well. I think they say about one minute of stir time. I might have cheated here and not done one minute. I guess we'll find out. I don't know where I'm going here. I ran away. Uh, here we go. I grab a uh, the paintbrush that I'm going to use to apply it to because I know that I'm going to sacrifice this paintbrush to the gods of resin. So I'm just using it to stir. Alright, now I'm pouring it into the aluminum lake. So this stuff wasn't created for uh, coating your 3D printed pieces because oftentimes with 3D printed pieces they have little ridges and um, somebody suggested to me that I use this to coat my foam projects if I want just that nice hard coat. Now it doesn't make it as hard as plastic. If you laid down a ton of layers it would but it just makes it more sturdy, waterproof and I like the glossy glossy sheen it gives. So I'm continuing to mix it a little bit, but I'm also spreading it out a bit. And now I just paint it on. And, uh, you know, it will drip a little bit. So I've, as you can see, I've put my um, plastic back on. And the reason why I attached the foam piece to the headdress first before resin coating it is this kind of, I'm gonna draw some of the resin into and onto the skull cap because I like the shininess and the fabric is already shiny as well. So. For me, it's creating more uh, adhesion for the um, foam piece and the, the skull cap because it's locking it in together a little bit more. Um, and in order to get those ear pieces, like the little sideburns down, I've pinned them to the headdress as I'm resin coating them. So that'll help uh, attain that shape so it's closer to my head. And I just paint this on. And as you go, uh, when it's drying and this in this little process that it dries you'll see little drip marks you just go in with your paintbrush and just sort of clean them up again the working time isn't very time-consuming so uh, you'll be okay just check in on it after you've got it all coated check in on it every three to five minutes until it's not dripping and you know you just kind of draw those drip marks up but again it, it uh, turns to thick syrup fairly quickly so you're not gonna have to babysit it too much. And I'm going along the back edge of this too just to help add some stability to there as well. 
because uh, those little sideburn pieces don't have any structure behind them yet. I love that that one shape looks like an S. I think I was just cutting out a bunch of J's and S's. How cute. Because my name is Jamie Stratton. Well, Vaughn. Vaughn's my middle name. Yeah, I'm getting under the foam bits just a bit too. Again, it'll help secure it on just a little bit more. And I like the glossy sheen of this, so me uh, putting it on the skull cap fabric is, it's, uh, it's not a bad idea because the fabric is already shiny, so it's, it's not gonna be a huge contrast. I will say this project took me all of about, well, one full day to make it and perhaps a few hours here and there in the following days to add a few more details and things like that. Um, I will say I, I have not rhinestone this yet and I'm planning to, so uh, that will add more time. But you know, you could you could make this in one day. It's the dry time that takes some some weight out of this. So I typically apply my resins in the evening where I can just let it sit overnight and ignore it until the morning. And then you wake up to a nice surprise. It's like a maker's Christmas <laughs> when your projects are dry. I have a lot of resin here, so I just, I kept layering and layering I think I got ambitious with how much I would need. It's no fun to have to mix a new batch mid-project. It doesn't matter, but it's good to just have as much as you need. Right, I think I make a video edit here very soon. I hope so. I apologize, this is going on a little too long. <laughs> you get to look at my arm a lot. <laughs> Again, if you have any questions about this, please comment below. No problem. All right. I turn the sound down, but you can hear if I click my fingers, it makes a nice taffy sound, which is satisfying. So I'm going to, uh, I'm trimming away a bit of the resin that's dried on the plastic. It's no big deal. You can take an X-Acto knife or some scissors and just kind of cut that away. And now I'm going to make uh, some added support for the little sideburny bits. I'm not going to add wire or anything like that. I'm just going to line them with more foam. I'm not too concerned about them. I'll be delicate. Uh, if you want to be more uh, proficient here in terms of having something that's more stable, you would have created this skull cap with that shape in mind, which I had not because I was kind of making this up as I went, so. Oftentimes when I make things for myself, I won't necessarily have a sketch, I just have an idea in my head. Um, but you know, having a sketch and a guideline is a really great way to make sure that you stay on the road. I always tell clients and that uh, sketches are like roadmaps and make sure you stay on track to the end goal. But you can take detours here and there if the, if the route is more fun. I'm using an X-Acto knife to get those shapes and just kind of carve away a little bit at the inside to make sure that it's uh, looks nice Ta -da! and now we do all we do is just add feathers in in the way that you think looks nice 
and I haven't tried this too much yet because typically when I've made these, I hot glue the feathers in and then the headdress stays permanent forever. Well, until you rip it apart. But I like this for all of us traveling showbiz people that we can take the feathers out, pack them in a little Tupperware container or in a bag. You pack them flat and then the head piece goes, you know, in the suitcase as well. And then you can assemble it when you get to the theater. So in my uh, toying with this, I have not noticed any of the feathers coming out. Um, and also I've tried to mark when I got it to a place where I liked it, I tried to mark where I put the feathers in so that when I assembled it again, I would know where to put the feather. So I was reusing the same hole because this craft foam is fantastic, but it's not super, super dense. So I feel like over time, after 50 wears or so, you you might have to replace your foam uh, centerpiece because if it gets poked too much, it's not gonna hold the feathers anymore. Or just decide that you need to hot glue it. There she is. And here I am gonna give it a go. I haven't lined it yet. I will, I promise. But for now, you get to see what this looks like, which turned out pretty great, I will say. And here I am unassembling it so you can see how easy it is. Oh my, we did it! I look forward to seeing all of the wonderful headpieces y'all create. Thank you so much for watching and feel free to comment below if you have any questions. I realize I went through a lot of information quickly, but I really appreciate it. Okay, bye!